Anyway, on this video, I wanted to go over how to install a utility winch in the back of your pickup truck using the back rack. Um, no one really covered it yet. Um, and it's very easy and very possible to do. Um, I looked into it before I did it. Somebody asked, could I install a winch to my back rack? And somebody responded, I wouldn't. Well, I would and did. And I can tell you right now, a winch like this is perfectly fine installed to one of these back racks. In fact, it's better than bolting it uh, to the bed of the truck. I've seen some videos where guys fabricated their own crossbar onto the bed and then installed one of these winches and they were still having some issues with the bed slightly bowing. When you bolt it to one of these back racks, it's so strong that it won't bow. And plus the back, you know, the back rack itself is bolted to the bed. So the winch, right, all the work the winch is doing is going to be on this being taken by the back rack not the bed so anyway this is the harbor freight 2500 pound atv utility winch which um by the way um, it's on sale right now for 64.99 until september 2nd 2021 so if you're seeing this video anytime in the, within the next 10 days, now's the time to get one. They're back on sale. Um, Harbor Freight hasn't had good sales for over a year now since the pandemic. So people used to get them as low as $49.99 and $55. Um, now the cheapest you can get it is $64.99. Um, but it's going to go back up to $80. Um, after the second so I highly recommend picking up one now anyway let me go go ahead and show you how I did it so here's the winch itself here's one of those brackets they sell for $4.99 the flat bracket which originally had the two it, it bent 90 degrees so you could also install one of those um, rollers I took an angle grinder and cut that off because I knew I wouldn't need it and it would be in the way. You don't have to do that, but I did it. Also, another thing I did was I took another, I took some flat stock I had and cut and made one more bracket. And the reason I did that on mine was to give a little bit of extra space so this third bolt right here could go through and it wouldn't interfere with the bed. Again, that's not necessary if you don't have spare metal or don't have an angle grinder or the capability to do that you don't have to but I did on mine because this way not only do you have the two bolts bolted into the square bracket and through the back rack but you also have that third bolt bolting it straight to the square bracket to give it a little bit extra strength and support these are all all three of these bolts are grade eight bolts the two top ones are three and a quarter long okay by five sixteenth i've got a washer one on this side another washer on that side with a lock washer and the nut same thing with the bottom one except the bottom one is only a one inch long bolt because it's only going through the one bracket right here it's one inches long it's got that same washer another washer on the other side and a lock washer and a nut as you can see this thing is firmly secured to this vehicle and it's not going nowhere and i've already tested it it works great it's rated to 2500 pounds but most people that will be pulling stuff into their truck it probably won't be more than 500 pounds like for me and many of my viewers uh, we pick up lawn tractors most lawn tractors that I pick up would be 500 pounds max many not even that heavy more like 350 400 pounds 
but if you have a golf cart or an ATV or a motorcycle that you want to pull into the back of your pickup, this will do it no problem. This is plenty strong to handle up to the 2,500 pounds. And really, you could probably, even if you wanted to, install a larger winch. But you're not going to be pulling anything much heavier than... I'm not exactly sure how heavy those golf carts are. I think I heard somebody said one was about 750 pounds. That's only about a third of um, the max that this winch can handle. Now, I haven't hooked up the, all the wiring yet. Right now I have it set up where if I want to put a jump pack directly to these leads and turn it on, it'll release, it'll pull the wire in and then I just, you know, I undo this, pull it out manually, put my jump pack on, and it'll begin pulling it in. I also have the controller, if anybody's familiar with these winches, which if you're looking at this video and, and these type of winches, you probably already know what they include. They include the winch, the control box for the wireless remote, and the wiring. It comes with 10 gauge wire. It's probably about four feet long. Okay, now they tell you to keep that um, receiver box out of the elements and out of the rain. So what I'm gonna do, rather than put a battery back here and have that receiver box back here, I ordered eight gauge wire, 20 foot, 25 foot long, black and red, for $21 off Amazon. And what I'll be able to do is hook that wire up to the winch, run it down between the bed and the cab, under the frame, against the frame rail, up into the engine cab, and in, in this truck there's an extra battery compartment for an auxiliary battery, and I'll attach the wires to the battery inside the engine compartment, and I'll have the receiver box in there. This way, it's all clean inside the engine bay, away out of the elements and out of sight. Okay. Um, from there, I'm only gonna. All you really need is a $23 Walmart battery, 230 cranking amps. As long as you make sure you keep that battery charged, that's more than enough to power this thing. You don't need a full-size battery. You know, you don't need a car battery, a tractor battery, that size battery will do more than, than fine. Just as long as you make sure you have it properly secured in that engine bay, right? So you run that, I'm going to run that 8 gauge wire down under, hook it in up in there with the receiver box inside of there. I've got my wireless remote and I'll be able to use it and not have to worry about any of that stuff outside. Now if you wanted to... Sure, you could hook, you could bolt a battery box in here and have your battery out here and have your receiver box out here. But again, then you got to worry about the receiver box getting wet. So you would have to figure out a way to keep that thing dry. So if you have the capability to do it, I just highly recommend ordering that 8 gauge, 20 foot long, 25 foot long uh, lead wire and run it right under the cab up into the engine bay to the secondary battery compartment and then you're set uh, you're good to go but in the meantime I can hook up the um, I have it in the truck I can hook up the um, <clears throat> the box that controls the remote temporarily to here and still run it off a jump pack which is how I've been doing it right now I just uh, yesterday just to test it I hooked the jump pack right up turned it on and I already had the line extended and it pulled in perfectly. Now, if you wanted to, you could hook up the receiver box to it temporarily. Have your jump pack, turn the jump pack on. Then you have your wireless remote in your hand and you pull it right in. But yeah, this is plenty strong. This back rack for this application. You don't have to worry about the bed bowing, damaging anything. It won't happen. And if you ever wanted to take the thing off, you just undo the bolts, and then you buy two caps, and it was like it was never there. That's the other good thing. Um, what else is there to mention about it? 
let's see oh yeah as far as so the wiring I ordered and then at Home Depot they sell the um, connectors I'm gonna need two connectors to hook to the two battery terminals and two joining joiners the crimps to crimp the end of the receiver box wire to the wire that I ordered coming in and then a little electrical a liquid electric tape or if the crimps got the plastic cut coating or electric tape and then you're set as far as that goes so that's the way I'm gonna do it to keep it nice and uh, tucked away like I said if you want to do it in here you can that's up to you but the most important thing is how I did it one other thing I'm gonna do um, since that cable is probably gonna rub against here I got to put something here at the moment I have two pieces of Gorilla Tape so this way when the cable rubs against it'll rub against this Gorilla Tape now it wouldn't be a big deal because this is the plastic cap so it would rub, rub against this cap right and and you know cause a little bit of friction there but I am gonna probably end up putting either some kind of um, like vinyl like a you know something to protect it and then um i'll tell you that guy right there is a big time jerk off he flies around here right and um he almost ran me off the road one time with my s10 because i used to have an s10 now i got this silverado if he comes flying down the road and tries to run me off the road <clears throat> with my silverado he's gonna have some trouble so Anyway, getting back to the topic at hand, like I said, you can put some, I, I'm going to put something here so this way when the cable rubs and makes contact here, it won't uh, cause any damage. Or I can get a cable sheath, one or the other. And then, of course, depending on what you're pulling, you can buy the strap to wrap around the frame of whatever you're pulling up. Or on a lot of uh, four-wheel tractors, they have the tow hitch hole in the back which the hook will hook right into and you can pull it up that way but whatever you're towing it'll tow in just fine I ordered 10 foot long R tramps by Lund they were a little bit pricey but they're worth it like I just said I'm, I'm upgrading from a Chevy S10 I had an S10 for almost 10 years that was much lower I had six foot foldable Harbor Freight ramps um, but I didn't have the winch, so I always had to do back braking. I had to break my back to get tractors in. Now I won't have to. I'll have the long arch ramps, so the tractor will go up the ramps no problem without getting caught on anything, and that winch will easily pull the tractor in. But, yeah, I have um, a few helpful videos. I have another video on how to add an actual cigarette lighter to the Silverado these newer 07 through 13 Silverados because uh, they don't come with it they're just power outlets so you check that out I have a video of how to repair the Chevy S10 uh, reclining handle for the seat because they're known to break off and I have lots of helpful videos on um, repairing tractors tips and tricks so check that out my uh, my channel's growing i'm at about 825 subscribers right now you know another 175 i'll finally hit a thousand that'll put me on the map my videos will start being seen more and um this way you know i'll be able to help people out my videos will be helpful and it'll be good so uh, if you could subscribe I'd really appreciate it. Give me the thumbs up if this video was helpful. And leave a comment down below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But like I said, this is how you do it with the back rack. And like I said, this is very strong. More than safe for this uh, application. So that's the way to do it, guys. Oh, and, and another thing. I ordered this back rack. I just bought this truck. It didn't have the bed line or the back rack yet. I ordered the back rack specifically for number one to protect that window since I'm going to be pulling tractors in and we do snow removal in the winter and I don't want to accidentally hit that glass and break it. 
and because I knew I was going to be installing a winch. And that's the best place to install it and the strongest place right there. So those are two reasons I bought the back rack. So well worth it. The S10 didn't have a back rack. It would have been really difficult to install a winch into that truck um, because there was no real strong area for it to be supported. And I did hit that window several times and luckily didn't break it. So I definitely needed the back rack. So I'm happy I got it. It was well worth it. I, you know, if you have one of those mid-sized pickups, I'm not sure if they make a back rack for those vehicles. They probably do. I highly recommend it. It makes things so much easier. And it gives you, this louver one's nice. Gives you a little extra privacy. And, um, and it's just good looking, you know? So it's a good utility rack. And, um, you know, that's the louvered version of it. And I think it's great. All right, guys. Like I said, if you found this video helpful, leave a comment, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them. And um, have a good day. And remember, things on sale right now until September 2nd. It is uh, August 21st. You got about 10, 12 days if you want to get it on sale. Now's the time because then it's going to jump back up to 80 bucks. And it's not going to go down from there for a while. Like I said, Harbor Freight, ever since the, the, the pandemic, um, they got rid of the 20% off. They haven't had many deals lately. And um, with inflation going on, I don't see it getting any better for a while. So now's the time to get it for 65 bucks, 5 bucks for the bracket, and then you're set. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.